All right, folks, less than four days uh, for Congress to cut some sort of a deal to prevent a government shutdown. Joining me now, Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy. All right, Senator, uh, all eyes on the Republican Party. Listen, no matter what, you guys are going to get the blame. I don't care if there's a Republican in the White House, a Democrat. I don't care if you control Congress, if you don't. But this time, there's specific focus on the, gov on the Republicans because it seems to be a lot of infighting, particularly over border funding. Yeah, there is. And I think that anything that ultimately passes has got to strengthen the border. The border's at a crisis. And if President Biden started a year ago, how do I make it so there's infighting among Republicans? I think I'll do it by allowing 200,000 people come across our border illegally every month. My gosh, she's done a great job. So I think there needs to be something about the border, not just to prevent infighting, in fact, primarily because there's a crisis at the border. And if President Biden's going to let it happen, maybe Congress can can force him to do something about it. But what's it looking like? Uh, you know, uh, Kevin McCarthy today saying, hey, there's no deal without border in it. Uh, it's, what, uh, can you handicap it for us? Uh, I can't handicap it for you because I'd be handica handicapping the House of Representatives. I don't think Kevin can handicap the House <laughs> of Representatives right now. Uh, but I know I just left our Republican lunch. Lots of conversation. How do we do something which can keep the government open and address the issue at the border? And can we do both at once? That's the conversation. Uh, uh, t we, got the, we have the debate tonight. Uh, of course, the border is going to be brought up. I would suspect everyone's going to be on the same page there. But where there is some more division, though, is uh, on Ukraine, continued funding in Ukraine. I know you're one of the Republicans who continues to back the funding, but a larger part of the party is saying no or, or you know, let's, let's pause. Let's get some sort of assessment. What are you telling constituents who may be kind of wondering, uh, you know, we cut, we're in Louisiana. There's a lot of people in, in your state that need help, financial help, and they're watching cash, billions of dollars go to another country, by the way, to protect their border. Yeah, so first I'll say that we're helping Ukraine because, because not only are the Ukrainians helping themselves, they're helping the United States of America. Russians are trying to kill Americans around the world. Google, Wagner Group attacking U.S. troops in Syria. And you will see where they literally attacked, and we slaughtered them, but they attacked our troops unprovoked. They're in Venezuela, they're in Cuba, they're in Africa, actively trying to enable the killing of Americans or killing Americans themselves. Is there the a limit, though? Is there a limit? Sir, with all due respect, is there a limit to the funding? I mean, you have a lot of folks in your state who are living month to month, week to week. They're on food stamps, and the food stamps run out two days before the next round comes through. What do you tell them? Like, hey, you know what? We're fighting Russia? But we can walk and chew gum at the same time, number one. So we're protecting our young people. My daughter's an ROTC. We're protecting our young people by having the Ukrainians take down the Russians, number one. Number two, we absolutely have to take care of Americans, by the way. I'll also point out that if you look at one of the greatest jobs programs for Americans, it was the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Those dollars continue to go out and continue to promote not, not just better roads, but also better jobs. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I could go down the list. Okay. Uh, and so, although, but we've although, got to take care of those programs that you mentioned, Charles. Although some folks are worried about the inflationary aspects of it. I'm going to ask you about something else that's critical to voters, Social Security. Uh, you bring it up a lot. You tweet about it a lot. You've got a proposal out there. How does it work uh, with respect to, to securing it, it's, uh, you know, tamping down, making sure that it's there for people? So Social Security trust funds going insolvent in eight years. When that happens, people receiving Social Security will get a 24 percent cut. Boom, like that under current law. We've got to fix it. My problem, neither Biden nor Trump, they're both pretending there's not a problem. Are there solutions or non-solutions? We've got to have candidates who are willing to talk about it and then offer an idea. We've got a proposal that repeals windfall elimination provision, okay. has work incentives in there, does other things, and by the way, prevents that 24% cut. We need to talk about it. We need to fix it. If you, if you presented this to, uh, to voters 65 and older, would they think it was a great idea or would they recoil in fear and horror? No, we presented it through polling and focus groups. They think it's a fabulous idea. Right. Uh, and, and that's the thing. It should be the third rail to allow a 24% benefit cut. And that's what, unfortunately, both President Biden and President Trump are effectively proposing. Senator Cassidy, thank you very much. Thank you.